a look at what's going to happen on the women's side first. And for the loonies, it's number one, Alev Kelter. Two-time Olympian, an absolute powerhouse, and she has been everywhere on the field earlier today. On the other side, for the Rocky Mountain experts, it's the number two one, Ariana Ramsey. Ramsey, an Olympian in her own right, a teammate of Alev's, and she got the job done. She has so much pace, and she'll be one to watch in this final matchup as well. They are certainly the stars to watch. Kelter going to her college in Wisconsin, Ramsey at Dartmouth, and the Eagle River Arkansas native and Philadelphia PA native will be head to head in our very first match. And it has been a good one so far. I, it has been a battle of the number one seed, so not really surprised at how that played out earlier today. And really, it was the same on the men's side of things. We expect a very good final there as well. Experts got it done in Minnesota, and now they have earned their right to compete for the final again here in San Jose. And number 14 for the experts, Darrell Williams. Williams has pace. He came in off the bench. He made an immediate impact, and he got the job done, booking them a spot in their second half. On the opposite side, it's the SoCal Rhinos loggerheads, and number eight, Derek Adams, was spectacular today. Derek Adams with that lovely inline, the arcing run, evading the defense, the pace, the power to finish, and again, to compete for a final here. A big improvement from Minnesota. We just mentioned them, but it's the Fijian versus the Lancaster Mass Man. And how about Madison Hughes and Temba? These two are very good as well. Madison Hughes, such a leader. He gets the job done. He orchestrates everything. He is pulling all the strings, but he has the ability to finish. And then Ioanni Temba, he's a Fijian player playing for their national side. He scored a beautiful try, hesitates the defense, but backs himself up as well. Rugby Sevens is fast and it is furious. If you're not familiar with it, it is seven minute halves. The time runs, they're playing at full tilt, and it is truthfully an expenditure in both energy and also just physicality and it has been that way all day the semifinals happened earlier if you were with us on YouTube it was the loonies on the women's side who defeated the loggerheads in a 1914 battle and then it was the experts defeating the retrievers by a score of 10 to 7 and that set up what we're looking forward to here in this final a very exciting day of rugby from San Jose just three points the difference in both of those matches and we expect the same in this final the Loonies won the tournament in Minnesota, but the experts just won their first game. So they are building momentum. They are improving game by game. And it's 14 minutes, you already mentioned. It's end-to-end -end action. Premier Rugby Sevens and the Western Conference Final from PayPal Park in San Jose, California. It is going to be a good one. Pleasure to have you along for this Western Conference Final and the trophy and the marbles on the line. I'm Nick Gizmati. Pleasure to have you along. Joining me in the booth is Abby Gastitis. And down pitch side, it is Bree Kim as we get you set for the run out. Pleasure to have you here. We'll go down to Bree shortly, but it's the loonies and the experts who will kick things off for us. The weather has not really been a factor, but it's worth mentioning the temperature has cooled off drastically from earlier today, Abs, but still, fatigue a factor. You bake in that sun all day, and now you're getting ready to play your second match. What's the mentality? You've been there before. You're an Olympian. It's all about flushing that performance from earlier. Both of these teams won their earlier matches in order to earn themselves the right to play in this final, but you had to rehydrate, recover, and rest. And now it's all eyes on these next 14 minutes, one moment at a time, and it, it is all to play for. This is why you play this sport. Finals footy, all the energy, all the hype. So many great players. We talked about Ramsey earlier on the opposite side for the Loonies. We talked about Kelter, but the Rocky Mountain experts with a little bit of something to prove out here. These two teams have battled all season long. A chip on their shoulder for the experts. They know they've earned their right to play in this matchup. 
but a lot of people doubting their performance from earlier on. So they'll want to back that up against the Loonies here tonight. Pleasure to have you along with us on this one. We are underway in the women's final from PayPal Park in San Jose and quickly picked up by the experts. And will be a stoppage right off the hop, reminding you that it's seven minute halves. That clock will run. We'll keep you apprised to penalties and whatnot. And if you're new to rugby, Lots of different things happen all at once, and the scoring can get high. And remember, if you do hear that horn at the end of a half or a game, that doesn't mean the plate stops dead. So make sure you're paying attention. Don't blink in Rugby 7, Abby. A knock on, an error seen right off the bat from the experts. Not how they would have wanted to start, but now Looney's ball in hand, and that danger woman, Alev Kelter, shifting it to another danger woman, Bianca Silva, looking to take the corner straight away. Silva with a good run down that far side, tackled down, but the ball comes back towards the center. And the Loonies pushing early for the offense. Remember, passes have to be lateral, and it's a try right away. Caroline Crossley finds the zone to make it a 5 to nothing lead at 5.55 of this first half. Caroline Crossley, the Canadian international. She has the ball in two hands. She's cruising across. She's dragging the expert's defense, but no one is being brave and willing to step up and put a shot in on her. So she had all of that power and hesitating the defense with her teammate on the outside, making sure she had that option to pass, but she didn't need it. She backed herself. Again, no one going through to put a shot in. So have another look here. Ball moves through the hands. Kayla Maleshi, Caroline Crossley, a little in, out, and then just backs herself, tucks the ball once she knows she's going to commit to the run, dots it down. Remember in rugby, you physically have to touch that ball down in the try zone for it to count. And Looney's up early to a 5-0 lead. And that try worth five points, a conversion worth two. A love Kelter, the number one who we talked about in our pre-show for you, misses that conversion, so the score is five to the hands of the experts now. They're in the light blue and white. And it is the Loonies in the all-white unis. Those of you watching at home, experts with it trying to get a little bit of offense going themselves. The pass fails, and it's quickly recovered by Watkins. Taken down in the tackle, moved out, at a goki. We'll work it back. Quick toss there. So it was a forward pass from the experts. Again, unforced errors seem. Maybe some nerves, they need to settle those, get them out of their system, because now they're just gifting that ball back to the loonies. And now this is a scrum, it's a great platform to attack off of. You split the defense, you use that full width, and you're condensing multiple defenders into a tight space. Abby can coach as well as be an analyst. And for the third member of our broadcast, who spoke to the coaches before we came on air, let's go down to Bree Kim pitch side. Bree. Yeah, Looney's head coach Robin McDowell must be very happy with the first few minutes for this team as he wanted them to let the ball do the work. He's so proud of the squad that he's assembled in the last 10 months, scouring all of North America to find the best talents. Wants everyone to be able to show their individual strengths as we're seeing right here, guys. That's Silva for the Loonies trying to make something work and the offense coming right away for them as they have that five to nothing lead with that early try. Loonies working, but the good defense here by the experts. Physical game right off the hop, Abs. Better defense from the experts coming forward, putting in that shot. It is a full contact sport. You have to show heart. You have to put your body on the line. Oleshi out of that tackle to the hands of Gonzalez. Beautiful pass over to Alem Kettler, who was just, oh, excuse me, Kelter, who was fantastic early on. Now it's to Maleshi. Maleshi, the 11. Taken down, that's Silva. Maleshi in the tackle now. Silva out with it. To the hands of Gonzalez. And it has been all offense for these Northern Loonies early on. Very little of anything coming from the experts. And this is exhausting to play defense for this long. This amount of phases from the experts, they're going to start to break down. You're going to see gaps start to open up, and the Loonies need to exploit them. Crossley has it on the far side, over to Kelter. 
exhausting defense of the experts. They would just love to have some possession. Looney's trying hard on the far side. Their first try came near us. Now we're on the far side of the field. And remember, it is a north-south game, but it is also very much east-west. A dangerous loose pass thrown there from the Loonies. Just unnecessary again. You had your line set. Just move the ball through the hands. Continue to build pressure. Experts did really well there to maintain their defensive shape and not let the Loonies in for a second try. You see some substitutes coming in already. The fatigue playing a factor, already needing to get some fresh legs in there to make an impact. And substitutions in Rugby Sevens allow different than what you're used to if you're watching 15s. Yes, yeah, so you have five additional players, but you can use seven substitutions in PR Sevens, which means every person can be subbed in multiple times as long as you don't exceed the total number of seven. Big scrum and out of the rock, the ball comes to the experts, so a little bit of offense and an opportunity, but they'll elect for the kick, and the loonies recover almost immediately. That will open this left side of the field. Kelter looking for it. She will have it and finds her way into the try zone and tacks on another few, and it is now a 10 to nothing lead for the loonies as this first half nears its final minute. Kicking away possession from your own 22, not a terrible idea, but she needed to boot that ball as far away as possible. Instead, she sent it high right into the middle of the pitch, and no one was chasing it. Looney's too easily recovered that, and then simple through the hands. They did well there. MP photo set to Lev Kelter up, and no one's stopping that woman from that close to the try zone. Kelter with a chance for two more. She has the boot for the conversion. This one will try to curve in, but it will just miss to the left. So the score remains 10 to nothing with 20 on the clock, and the Loonies out to a commanding lead early. If you're the experts, you're feeling a little defeated right now. Heads are starting to go down, but they need to connect with one another and continue to motivate each other. Again, more substitutions coming in here. So you have Jasmine Rampton coming onto the pitch, Amanda Berta stepping off. So maybe a different tactic here, seen from head coach Irene Gardner, but they need to retain this restart and work their way down the pitch. Here is the restart. The Loonies will kick, experts now, ball in hand. They've got to just try to find something. Beautiful pass there. Here's Ramsey. Here's Sai Kelter coming in. Stays inside. Wonderful run. Ramsey will cut to the middle. Trying for the chase and a good takedown by Carissa Norston. Experts still moving it. They've got space on that left side. They will find the try zone. And how about that? Their first look at offense. And Adagoki tacks on five. And just like that, as the first half horn goes, it's a five-point swing and a difference of just one score at the moment. And what a difference it makes going into halftime. It's a morale boost. But that woman right there, the Olympian we spoke of before, she has absolute pace, as you can see. So well done to the Loonies to corral her. But I love the support from the experts. Everyone still engaged, still active. And it was simply moving the ball through the hands. And Adagoki gets on the board with five and picks up a conversion, so that will make it 10 to seven. You gotta love it, that's how quickly Rugby Sevens can change on you. For those of you watching our free streaming coverage, it will conclude after the commercial break, but we will continue on CBS Sports Network. Remember, you can find us by going to cbssportsnetwork.com slash channel finder. It's 10 to seven, seven minutes down, seven to go. We'll be back to PayPal Park in San Jose after this.
Premier Rugby Sevens and it's halftime in the women's final. The Loonies out to a 10 to 7 lead over the experts. Hi everybody, welcome inside our broadcast booth. I'm Nick Gismondi alongside my partner, Abby Gastitis. Bree Kim is down pitch side. What a great first half. Loonies absolutely came out firing, scoring two quick tries, but then right in the mix are the experts. The Olympians on both sides of the pitch getting it done, but we have seven minutes of action ahead, and it is all to play for. And an Olympian to my left as well, Abby Gestitis. He's got, she's got those rings tattooed on. I see the I see the badge of honor. Big fan. Second half coming underway right now. It was a good start to this one, but momentum in the favor currently of those Rocky Mountain experts. But how about this? The Loonies with a nice recovery here off of the restart to get this half underway and we are back to seeing that offensive push and the physicality between these two teams on the rise also. Looney starting the second half just how they started the first with a lot of possession, athleticism on display and a Lev Kelter is just lurking at the top of your screen waiting for the ball to get out there and it is a long arm penalty to the Loonies. Keep your eye on that number one in white that is a Lev Kelter who we talked about she is a weapon and an absolute force. Kelter into the tackle. Looney's now with that possession. They are in striking zone. Norston holding, thinks she has a gap, works it up, but the experts, very good on the tackle. Ramsey with the takedown. Ball will come out. Looney still possessed, try to go into the outside, and a little bit of a lane right there for Ugin Jimmy, but cannot find it. Absolute tossing around of bodies and a huge hit. Temi loses that one, and we'll see who recovers it. I believe possession will go over to the experts. There are some serious collisions happening down there on the pitch. Have a look here. Ogan Jimmy just trying to get through. Experts do well to take her down. Nakamura, the Japanese international, getting low and some players just being assisted off the pitch, making sure we're looking out for player welfare. But that woman right there taking down the loonies and getting the ball back for their side. So it will be a scrum to the experts just on their own 22 meter line, which is that whitewash you see on your screen. As the great American longtime captain of the Eagles, Mr. Todd Clever once told me when getting hit in this sport, you gotta hang on to the ball, man. <laughs> And he said that as he was standing over me after hitting me. <laughs> Let's bring in the third member of our team. Bree Kim is standing down pitch side. Bree, what do you got? Yeah, Evan Hazy just went on for the experts. She was just in that scrum, and she's got the biggest support group here. They've got posters that say crazy for Hazy. She lives in the Bay Area, plays for the Berkeley All Blues, also an Eagle herself. So it's great to see some of these biggest American names get the show out for their from their hometown fans. I like that. Bree, be on the lookout for any Abby Gustitis posters as well. Big fan. Big fan up here. And back to the rugby, we have Kayla Maleshi ball back in the Looney's hands. Big scrum though, and lots of heavy collisions happening down there. You can hear them from up here in the booth. You can feel them up here in the booth. <laughs> Battle for this ball, it's in the hands of the experts. They're desperately trying to hang on to it, a dearth of offense in that first half. But a late try by them has emboldened them, and now we're, we're seeing a little bit more of a push. They're not sitting back as much as this tackle will happen. You see a Lev Kelter just not supporting her own body weight, so her hips were above her shoulders, which is illegal. You have to be able to maintain your own body position. So that ball's back in expert's hands, and this time not entering that ruck legally. So loonies are gonna start to get pinged here. They need to get disciplined. Otherwise, the experts will continue to just march down the pitch. Couple mistakes by the loonies right there, and you feel like that's them maybe trying to get a little bit of that momentum back that they have. They had it for so long in that first half, maybe slipping away a ton here, and that's where you see these oopses. Trying to grasp at straws. It's heightened down there. You can feel it. Desperation will start to creep in as that time winds down. But ball is back in the experts' hands. We see again a round of substitutions coming in. And Amanda Berta, she's already been on the pitch. She started this one out. So got a little rest, and now she's back in. And you see the speedster, Adagoki. She was our try scorer from earlier on. She is playing scrum half now. 
and you have Ari Ramsey out here on the wing. Both of them will look to back themselves. You're just joining us, it was two early tries by the Loonies, Crossley and Kelter. That made it 10 to nothing, but a late one by Adagoki and a conversion has cut that lead to just three. Here are the experts. Trying to get that ball across the halfway mark of the pitch and another opportunity and it will be a turnover so the ball will return to the loonies. Carissa Norston really making an impact on the field for me. She's involved in a lot of the rocks. Her aerials have been super strong and she's just in constant support. Really making a difference for this loonies side. This is still anyone's match. Time ticking away. It sits at 3.09, however, at the moment. But a difference of three is nothing really in rugby. Nothing. And don't even look away from your TV screens. Three minutes will go by in a flash. The game will be over. We will have a champion here in San Jose. Looney's Valenzuela, far side, moved across into the hands and trying to make the move. Tackle is made. Ball will move back. Picking it up is Crossley. Crossley just a little bit out of reach of Gonzalez. But offsides are the experts, so never behind the ruck. That's that point of contact when one player from each team going in against one another. So Looney's just slowing things down. You see them calling for the scrum. That's that set piece move. You have three forwards from each side who will contest this ball but it remains in the hands of the Loonies as fresh legs come back in. Substitutions happening and keep an eye on how the scrum is set up and you'll see the other three players very spread out on the backfield. It's an opportunity to condense some of the players on the defensive side so you can exploit a 1v1 battle or create an overlap. And it's a foot race and physicality so the Loonies putting it in. Scrum happening, ball will come out into the hands of Kelter. She is an absolute force. Drugged down, but holding on. And P. Photo brings the ball out. Now it's to that far right side, just over the hands and into touch it will go. Just slips away from Venezuela. Ball going into touch, so that will be a line out to the experts. Because the ball came off of a Looney's player, it looks like it was a knock on into the touch, so they can opt for the scrum. So the scrum is a little more given. Lineouts are more 50-50, so scrums, it's a better chance you maintain possession. So experts will choose that option, and they'll look to play out of their own 22. They have 80 meters to go, three points the difference, a minute to go. Oh, goodness, and this is why we love Rugby 7 so much. And the Loonies with a recovery here, and that is a 50-50 chance. But how about this? Valenzuela trying to find her way in. Ball pops out to the hands of Maleshi. Kelter trying to get a grip on it, and the Loonies will slow it down. They were so close and now have to be methodical. Tackle will happen. Loonies have the ball. They're pushed back a bit. Good defense here by the experts. Trying to reduce some of the space. Hustling is Valenzuela to the far side. Taking down ball, almost trickles away, and that could have been a turnover, but the Loonies regain control. Slight pause, pulled out by Norston. Trying to go right up the middle here, Abby, and a lot of defense by the experts. Experts need to start putting shots in. They need to compete at the runs because they need a turnover, and that is exactly what just happened. Can Amanda Berta go to distance to claim for the experts. The answer is going to be yes with five on the clock. What an absolute turnover that is in the experts. And number one, Amanda Berta find the center of the post. And this one is 12 to 10. What a massive moment. This sport is so incredible. End to end action. Do not blink, do not turn away because anything can happen and it was the turnover. Nakamura got the ball back for her side, moved it through the hands, and no one out there marking Amanda Berta. The transition from attack to defense is so challenging, and it's 
such an opportunity that the experts absolutely nailed. The conversion is a formality, but the final score will be 14-10. Here's another look at this beauty of a run. Nakamura with the initial tackle, and then the ball was out, deep to the referee. Ball goes through the hands of Spencer Bolt. She has her teammate in Amanda Berta, bursting down the pitch, putting the ball down, and congratulations to the experts. Well fought the entire 14 minutes. You gotta love this sport. That is it in about a nutshell. Amanda Berta wins it. The Rocky Mountain experts are your Western Conference winners. We'll be back in San Jose after this. Premier Rugby Sevens on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Good Sport, the official sports drink of Premier Rugby Sevens. Grab the good. Premier Rugby Sevens on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Good Sport, the official sports drink of Premier Rugby Sevens. Grab the good. Well, what a finish to the women's final between the Loonies and the experts. A 14 to 10 win for the ladies from Colorado here at PayPal Park in San Jose, California, where the Premier Rugby Sevens Western Conference Finals are underway. Let's go down to Bree Kim, who's standing by for our interview. Bree. I am here with MVP of the expert, Tuharu Nakamura. Congratulations on an amazing match. You all won this tournament, and now you're going to DC. Just tell me what that match felt like for you. Yeah, I, I, I feel Amazing, <laughs> amazing feeling, and it was my one of my dream to play in U.S. as a professional, and it was so good feeling. You've achieved that dream, and I know your teammates and your coaches speak so highly of you and the energy that you bring. So I know you have one last stop. So what's it going to take for you and your team to make sure that you can bring home that championship in D.C.? Yeah, I feel a lot of the comps from them, and then I feel a lot of love from them, and. That was why we are here, achievement. 
Well, Chi Chi, congratulations and best of luck in DC. Thank you very much. All right, good stuff down there by Bree. What an incredible finish to that one. Amanda Berta with an incredible try.